Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on On a Breadboard, we're going to be talking about capacitors, uh, specifically RC circuits, that's resistor capacitor circuits in series. So, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Obviously, we're just going to draw out our simple circuit. you got a battery, you've got a capacitor, and that's it. Now remember, we're using Kirchhoff's Law here, so we've got a loop got a voltage source, we've got a resistor, and then we've got a capacitor. Awesome! So, sum of voltages in a loop is zero, that's going to equal V, then minus voltage through a resistor is IR, but what's voltage through a capacitor? Well, capacitance is defined as charge per volt, so voltage is charge per capacitance. But what's charge? Well, remember the definition of current. This is going way back to Electronics 101, the first video I ever did, which was what is electricity. Current is defined as charge per time. So charge is current time. So voltage through a capacitor is ch oops, not charge, current times time over capacitance. So what we have here is a an equation that is defined by time. So this plus IT over C. And there we go. So we solve this. V equals IR plus IT over C. V equals I times R plus T over C. So current as a function of time is voltage over R plus T over C. And there we go. Oop, drew that through the C. Let's see if I can do that a little better. There we go. Okay. And so that's it. Pretty simple little equation. So to get the voltage we have, or, well, before I do that, so this creates a graph. Oop, terrible line. This creates a graph that looks something like this. Here's current, here's time, and here's a line where we have V over R, and then that just creates this curve. So uh, I drew out the time axis a little too long, but that's fine. Point is we've got a curve here which is some semicircular that starts at the current flowing through a resistor initially, V over R, and then slowly declines as the capacitor charges. Now what about voltage through the capacitor, voltage in the capacitor. Well, we know Vc is equivalent to current times time over charge, or no, over capacitance, and we just define current as V over R plus T over C. So, if we take the, and if we change this to Vn, and that's still the voltage in the capacitor, so voltage in the capacitor is equivalent to Vn over R plus T over C times T over C. And if we move some variables around, go away, if we move some variables around we get Vn times T over C times R plus T over C. Close the parenthesis, which equal, which means the voltage to the capacitor is Vn times T over RC plus T. And there we have it. This is a very simple equation that describes the amount of voltage in a capacitor as a function of time in this circuit with just one resistor and another capacitor. Okay, simple enough. Now, mind you, this is all under the circle of charging. And yes, I did just write that on its side. Now, when it comes to trying to determine how much voltage a capacitor is going to have as a function of time, that's simply solved by just plugging time into this equation and you get a number out. But when, 
when will VC equal VN? When? Well, technically never, because the only way that's going to be true is if this ratio here becomes 1. And the only way that's going to happen is when t is infinity. And at that point, these constants just go away, and you get a ratio of infinity over infinity, or just 1. But you're still going to get very close. And depending on your resistor and capacitor values, you're going to get pretty close pretty quick. So you can assume that at, if we're using 5 volt, well, you know, just you can assume that 99.9999% charge is basically 100. Because you're never going to get to the 100, but you're going to get pretty close. So this is all under charging. So that's it. Now, I do want to go over one more thing before we put this on a breadboard, and it's the cons and it's how we're going to discharge this. There are a couple ways to discharge a, a capacitor circuit, but this is the way we're going to do it on the breadboard. So this time we're going to have two loops. I2, I1, R, C, V. So for loop 1, sum of voltages 0 equals V minus I1, R plus the difference between I2 to I1, T over C. And for loop 2, sum of voltages equals 0 equals just I1 minus I2, T over C. So if we take this, we see that I1, T over C equals I2, T over C, which just means that I1 equals I2. Now because this is true, and we just did the math that proves it, we can ignore this loop for now. Voltage through the capacitor is equivalent to I2T over C minus I1T over C. And because these two are equal, what we just get is 0. So by connecting this junction to this junction, we can instantaneously drop the voltage in the capacitor to zero, and yeah, it's an instantaneous discharge as opposed to just removing the voltage supply and having the curve we'd get from this, oh, which I didn't give you. Sorry about that. I, uh, let's do this. Ooh, yep. e. Put this up here. The curve for this it looks something like this. Voltage time. Uh, there we go. Sort of like a uh, square root function. As it plateaus, and here we have V in. And there we go. So this is the circuit we're going to put on the breadboard, and we're going to be able to examine the waveform it generates and hopefully be able to see this curve here and I'll show you the discharge as it happens instantaneously so with that let's go ahead and put this on a breadboard okay so I'm gonna be using the Arduino and the breadboard I have attached to that um, for a couple reasons one it gives me an access to easier power supply just like for on the uh, resistor episode but for another reason, there's a really cool piece of software that uh, I found online, and I'll give you the description to it below, that lets me use this as a sort of oscilloscope with uh, a piece of uh, software written in processing. Uh, it's really cool, and if you're in a pinch, it's really useful, like for this video. So with that, let's get started. I've got um, right here a capacitor rated for 225 microfarad. Here it go. There it is, 220 microfarad at 16 volts. I've also got two different capacitors. This one is rated for 470 ohm. This one for 55 kilo ohm. 
So hopefully we'll see a difference in the waveform from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it this way. I'm just going to start by plugging in the resistor like so. Bend that down and out of the way. Then I'm going to attach the capacitor so that it's attached in line with the resistor. Then I'll go ahead and attach the leg, one of the legs of the capacitor to ground. The other leg of the capacitor, or the leg, oh, bend this the other way. The first leg of the resistor to 5 volts. And then I'll put another wire here where the resistor meets the capacitor. That's where we'll measure voltage, so that'll be plugged into the analog stream. Bend these down and out of the way. And then just a couple more wires for the reference volts. This plugs in here, and this will plug into A ref. And then this last wire here will plug in to discharge the capacitor. So all I've got to do is touch it to the leg attached to ground, like so. And that'll discharge the capacitor. So now you're going to be very amazed with what I show you next. There we go. So here I've got a very simple oscilloscope program running. So as you can see, it's already measuring 5 volts. Uh, the top line's 5 volts, the middle line's 2.5, and the bottom line's 0 volts. And the white line is where it's measuring. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll discharge the capacitor. And you can see it immediately drops to 0. Then if I let it charge, see it makes that wave. You can see it's charging very quickly. It's almost a straight path, but it's not quite. It's kind of curved. So this is the 470 ohm. Now if I take that out, take that out, replace it with the 55 kilo ohm, we should see a different story. And if I discharge again, you can see it more slowly climbs because we're limiting the resistance, or we're limiting the current more. So less current is flowing to the capacitor, so it charges much, much more slowly. And you can see the actual voltage is climbing slowly. But eventually, it will get to 5 volts. Or I'll get bored at some point and call it. Now, even though this is a bigger resistor, when I go to discharge it, it drops immediately. Instantaneously. So, proof of concept there and it just starts climbing again. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about charging circuits when it comes to resistor-capacitor pairs. Uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.